Hey, Sandra Grover here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I've wanted to do a demonstration on the difference between a fixed score and an indeterminate score in Super Collider. Now fixed and indeterminacy. What that means in music is with fixed you have a complete score, a fully written score, where you have a, a series of musical events that are set in play every time with every performance. It doesn't matter how many times you hear the performance or how many orchestras or performers you hear, it usually is the same, give or take the expression and interpretation of the performer or group. With indeterminacy, it's left to chance. The composer gives you a set of parameters to work with to interpret, and it's up to you as the performer to provide that output. So an example would be if the composer gave a group of players a chord within a 10 second time frame and those players were obligated to play that chord or those members of the chord. Now they could play it in different dynamics, they can play the notes in different techniques, and they can play it in uh, a, a huge range or a limited range within their instruments and an octave displacement and all of that. But they have to play that chord within the given 10 minutes. So that's an example of indeterminacy. So with that, even though you have the chord intact, things are left to chance. You're going to hear different aural changes and, and textures and, and all of that. So that in a nutshell is indeterminacy. Before we get started, I did want to let you know that we'll be doing this demo in MIDI. And this is the syntax to connect your digital audio workstation with SuperClatter and MIDI messaging and all that. So that is for your reference there. Uh, for safety, it's not really a safety hazard, I just had that in the syntax. Uh, this command period here will help unstuck the MIDI notes that extend too long in the time or in the event of the recording. And also for your reference, if you ever wanted a list of scales, you have that here, scale dot directory here. All right, let's get started. Okay, so for my fixed score, I have my melody syntax here. My MIDI instrument will play one note event every second because the default is at 60 beats per minute and at a fixed amplitude of half, 0.5. And a MIDI note key will have a fairly large P-seq with four P-seqs inside playing four notes uh, in a row one time before proceeding on uh, to the next row. And starting with middle C, middle C is 60, that is the MIDI note number for middle C. And it will go to 63, which is three semitones, being E flat above C. So a very C minor feel. Now I wanted to mention that I had forgotten to adjust my MIDI instrument. It's actually played at an octave higher, so you won't hear that middle C range. Uh, so it has nothing to do with the MIDI note number. It is my instrument there, but I didn't have time to change it and you know, it might not have sounded good at that mid range. So uh, it's, it's at an octave higher. So that's that. We have a fixed attack, a fixed sustain value, and a fixed release. Very short attack, pretty short sustain, and a relatively short release. Let's go ahead and uh, take a listen to this sequence. Make sure that I'm on the right track. Yes, I am. This is my melody track for my fixed melody. Track two will be my indeterminate melody. Track three will be harmony, fixed harmony. Track four, indeterminate harmony. Track five, bass. Track six, indeterminate bass. So I will be recording the fixed melody, harmony, and bass first. Toggle back and forth. Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and have a listen. A 
All right, so I was on the incorrect track there. So let's go ahead and have a listen with the correct instrument. So that is my sequence, and it would be going on into infinity there before I stopped the recording. So that's that. Let me add a little bit more rhythm. No chance, no indeterminacy here still. This will be a sequence of fixed values in a fixed order. So without further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and record this sequence. Let's go ahead and line this up real quick. Never hurts to quantize, even though it looks quantized. Now, notice that. All these note events are the same color, this color green. That is the velocity color for 63, the value 63. So mid, you know, mezzo forte to forte dynamic there. And also notice that, that that every note event is the same length, quite short, and that is the fixed attack uh, sustain, really the sustain and release that determines that MIDI data. So let's go ahead and have a listen just to make sure everything is lined up. Very good there. Now let's go ahead and do harmony. I will go ahead and mute this track so we can record the harmony track. And I will go ahead and do harmony one once a second, one note event a second. Let's go ahead and hear it first before I record, make sure everything's nice. And notice I have uh, three P6 here, but this is repeated twice. I'm going to shorten that sustain and release. All right. All right, let's have a listen at the two tracks played simultaneously. All 
All right, so as it was with the melody track, we have a given length and the same velocity. In this case, it's 57. And I have the amp being 0.45. So if you just did a quick calculation, value 127 being the highest or the highest amplitude or at the highest volume times 0.45, your answer is 15, uh, 57 point 15 approximately. So that is the explanation of this velocity here. Let's go ahead and we'll mute these and we will do our bass track. All right, so again, uh, in this case, it will be eighth notes playing at a fixed amplitude and a set of P seeks here. Let's just go ahead and have a listen before we record. All right, and let's go ahead and record. Make sure I'm in the syntax here. Okay, good. All right, let's uh, go ahead and change that, move that over. Ugh. All right, and we'll go ahead and have a listen to all of them. So there is your fixed music right there with a pretty much P seek is the way to go in terms of pattern for you there. Now, this is a nice enough melody and harmony and, and bass. It's pretty simple. In Super Collider, this takes me a while. If I were to hear this play by ear or hear it in my head and write it down, this would take me probably 10 minutes to write on a, a piece of paper, a staff paper. Uh, however, with, with Super Collider, I'm doing just automatic transposition because of these MIDI values. You have to add um, semitone relationships. Okay, that's a C, uh, E is uh, 64, E flat is 63. Uh, you know, 70 is B flat, it's the low seventh degree. So it's really, bit of a mind teaser so it's not as intuitive for me to do fixed score uh, or a fixed score in super collider definitely you can it's the option is there but uh, not as intuitive for me in my workflow so now we're just going to go ahead and steer to the indeterminacy and uh, i did forget to include the PRAND for my harmony, but PRAND is more left to chance anyway, so uh, rather than it be under the fixed score, we can go ahead and do it for our indeterminate voicings. So with our fixed score, we had a series of P seeks using the C minor scale degrees, but it was fixed. E flat played when E flat was supposed to play, every time you saw the number 63, for instance. Now with indeterminacy, we're going to have Super Collider output our C 
minor scale, including all degrees, and using the choose dot method, we're leaving it to chance. But the parameter is it is the C natural minor scale, minor being natural minor there. So let's go ahead and have a listen. Let's see what SuperCliner gives us. Wasn't that bad actually, but you did hear some of the notes repeat, which is fine. That is part of uh, a melody, you know, making it memorable and and uh, repetitive. There, uh, let's go ahead and add a little bit more exciting rhythm. Sometimes where I think super collider is almost human. So I don't know if you heard the relationship, but there was there was a little bit of motive going up and down before going down and up with some notes repeating before the next uh, set of rhythmic events. So I, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, so that's that there. Uh, let's go ahead and take a listen to the rhythm using P Chef. Now P Chef uh, takes an array and randomizes the values there and out outputs each value in a random order and once that order is selected it will continue looping that order so let's go ahead and have a listen and see what that sounds like That's all well and good, but if, <clears throat> excuse me, if you use too many uh, values or instances of P Chef like this, it could become less of a melody, a memorable, hummable, repeating melody, and become more something like embellishments. So I, for melody, I, I do prefer the, the P Seek here. So let's go ahead and move on because I do believe I have this example in the following uh, bit of syntax here. Uh, I did add this uh, for myself but I will share with you to add octaves to every note uh, to make it homophonous where you have notes play. Uh, you can include octave displacement here where this being middle C, this being an octave above middle C and this being two octaves above middle C because we are doing semitone relationships. Um, well, I'll just go ahead and inc include this here. You can do any of these three ways and the result will be the same. Let's go ahead and have a listen to what that sounds like. something for you there. But if you want octave displacement and want one note going, uh, one note event going at a time, then we would have it arranged this way. Using not the choose method, but the collect method right here with a bit of concatenative synthesis, syntax. <laughs> Not synthesis. That is another thing which I can't do, but I highly recommend uh, checking that out. <laughs> but I believe that is the syntax there. And here's your octave. So in this case, it would be any degree within the C natural minor scale. 
zero being the original octave, the, that range it's set at, negative 12 being 12 semitones below, an octave below, and 12 being an octave higher, 24 being two, octave, two octaves higher, and so on. Uh, so let's go ahead and have a listen just one, at a t one note at a time before a more exciting rhythm. I love it when it ends on the tonic there. Uh, for melody, I'm, I'm a bit traditional when it comes to the meaning of the word melody. When you have octave displacement and it just goes all over the map there, um, it's not memorable. It's not hummable, it's not singable for sure, you know, as, as, as our human uh, range is, is rather limited, our, our vocal range is limited. So I'm just gonna keep it at ranging two octaves, nothing more than that. And I'm gonna go ahead and record. Let's just see how our indeterminate melody plays out. Let's see what Super Clatter gives us. Toggle back and forth. All right. That was kind of cool. I did not expect that, but I meant to mute the tracks, so cool. Uh, that was pretty smashing, but uh, let's go ahead and uh, make sure all of this is lined up. Now you'll notice that each note event is at a different color. Uh, at a fixed length still, I think I'm, I still think I'm using the same length, but, and just for safety, Quantize. Ah, perfect. Okay, so that is our melody. Let's go ahead and record our indeterminate harmony. And for now, I'm just going to keep it at every two beats, you know, one instance every two beats. We will have octave displacement with our original range, an octave below, an octave above. And for here, this is the syntax for harmony. We're going to include a uh, random syntax there, a bit of code there, with values 1 and 3, through values 1 and 3, I meant to say. And what that simply means is it's going to have chords, either of, uh, up to, from, from two voices, two chord members, this being value 1, 1 is 0. So two chord members being value 1, to four chord members being value 3. Let's just go ahead and record and, and see what it sounds like. Again, I forgot to mute the, the melody track, but that's okay. We're, we're good there. All right, so yes, you see chords here. Ah, all right, so let me see if I, can, if I can scooch these into frame. They're so short. Quantize. All right, so we've got some three mem uh, chord with three chord members. Four. Oh, no, that's just two. I wouldn't re-record that because I don't think we had that right. 
Let me go ahead and mute here. That was much nicer. So let's go ahead and make sure they're all lined up. I tell you, <laughs> oh, not that, not that. I just want this track. So far away. Ugh, man. All right, uh, let's go ahead and add that to the melody. See what that sounds like. I do think that the harmony has potential. I, I would set the parameters in this case to be between three and four chord members there. So melody is not that memorable, so that is something I would tweak. But in any case, let's go ahead and add the bass. I have, yeah, for now I'll just do one instance per second uh, with uh, the original range and an octave below, 36 being two octaves below middle C. And we'll go ahead and turn that down, maybe to five. That's not eventful. Go ahead and do eighth notes. Kind of low, but we'll see how that sounds. Oh. All right, what am I trying to do? Okay, so let's go ahead and here. So all within the C minor, natural minor parameters there. Now let's go ahead and hear that one more time and then also the, uh, the, the fixed melody. And here's our fixed melody. So that 
that is one approach out of just a, a wide range of choices and options you can do there, especially with pattern. But that's, that's the idea that, that fixed media, well, fixed media works too. <laughs> that's another form of electronic music, but fixed score, a fixed score there. Uh, in, in Super Collider, it's just, uh, it's, it's there. It's, it's an option, uh, but for me, I, if I just have s some melody, some memorable melody and some harmony, some chords and a walking bass line like that, um, I, I will just go to straight to the MIDI keyboard and, and record in real time there. But yes, uh, that, that is there to be had. But for me, uh, Super Collider has been just the best as far as uh, indeterminate output and, and things left to chance. Some things I absolutely love, some things I'll throw away, um, but it, it's there to be had. So uh, that is indeterminacy in a nutshell. That is fixed score versus indeterminacy in super clutter in a nutshell. And so hopefully that gives you some inspiration uh, on, on how to approach MIDI data or, or sound files using these uh, methods, whether fixed or indeterminate. So thanks again for watching and listening. Always be on the lookout for some sound experimentation, experimentation in Super Collider and Logic Pro every Thursday. And yes, thanks again. Until uh, next time, thank you for watching.